Welcome back to another video and in today's episode we will be setting up a basic save and load system. So now I have already set up some values so if we hit 2 it's going to load us our health, it's going to load us our mana so it's going to restore our values and also it's going to load up these objects. So let's say we spawn a bunch more over here, we have these objects right here, we can save that, close it, hit play again so nothing in the world and once we load them as you can see, all of those objects are back in the world. So let's get started. The first thing that we will need is a save game blueprint, which will hold this information for us. So in the content browser, right click, blueprint class, all classes, and let's look for a save a game. So let's select this one. Let's press select and let's give this whatever name. So let's call this my save game. Now inside of this blueprint we will need to store all the variables that we are actually going to save. So first let's have a look what I have so far. So at this point I have some health, I have some mana, so this will allow us to remember the variables. So this could be any type of variable, so if you're following my inventory series this could be like your inventory uh, variables. But if we are spawning some kind of objects in the world that are like have like an actual visual effect that we want to see in the world, well, then the process is going to be a little bit different. Uh, what I have over here set up is I have a E and Q key events, which basically change the class that we are going to spawn one or the other blueprint. This is not too important. This is just an example. And then by doing a line trace, we are running a function called spawn actor. And this basically spawns the actor in its location. So if you want to load up the spawned actors or equipped equipment, then you will need to run it through the same event that you usually would like just regularly pick up or uh, equip these items. So, um, because, well, we can't really save actors, the values of them are getting lost for some reason. Uh, not quite sure why exactly that is that way, but if we do it like this, it works just fine. So, uh, let's start off by creating the variables that we will need. So I have the health and mana, so let's add those to my save game. So let's add those variables. We have a health value, which is a float value, and we also have a mana value. There we go. So that's it. Uh, the next thing is we will need to store the spawned actors in the memory. As of right now, I don't have anything that will store those. So what I will actually do is I'm going to create a structure for this. So blueprints, structure. Now let's call this S. Uh, actor actor locations so let's open this up and this will need to have two variables in this case at least because I'm only using two variables if you have some extra pop properties that you want to pass along then you need to store those properties as well for me all I have is a class and a spawn transform so only two variables will be needed so we need the actor class so let's add a actor class and we also need the transform which is a transform type there we go so that's it now let's go ahead and let's add this to our my save game and let's call this actor actor locations and this will be our s actor locations type and this needs to be an array since well we are going to store multiple instances of it so now back in our third person character again we need to store those things in the memory as well so we have the actor locations and then over here let's look for our s actor locations as well and again an array there we go so everything is exactly the same three variables in our character and three the same variables inside of our save game so now inside of our third person character let's store the references uh, the locations and the actor classes of these actors that we are going to spawn by simply getting this and let's just add a new entry to this like so like so split this and connect both of these the class and the transform as well there we go so that's pretty much it that's all that we need to do for this example right here now if you have uh, like if you're following my inventory series then you don't need to add this because obviously those are the actor references are already being stored in there so you can use those uh, the only thing I think that's missing is the actual actor class although I think that should be in the item data as well so uh, pretty much everything is already stored 
for that. So now let's start by saving our two variables, our health and our mana. So by default, I have 80. So if I hit play, they're uh, nearly full. That's just so that we can see that there actually are something. So it's not always full or, or always empty. So on one, I'm going to save. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to create a save game object. So we want to create it first. And the class is our save game. Uh, actually, my save game. That's the one that I created over here. And then from here, the next thing is we want to create a save uh, save game to slot. That's what we need. We need save game to slot. And then we can connect the return value to the same game save game object. And we can provide a slot name. Now, we don't need to create... Uh, if you want to have multiple slots for saving, you don't need to create multiple save game actors. All you need is just multiple save slot names. So for instance, uh, let's say we let's add two slots so that you would see what I mean by that. So we're going to call it one, two, or three. So whenever we hit one, actually, then we're going to need four of those. Here we go. So whenever we will hit one, we're going to save this to, let's say, uh, my slot name yeah let's just call this my slot name so we're going to save the information over there and now let's try to load that specific information so let's first let's do does save game exist and we're going to need to provide that slot name so my slot name goes over here it's going to check does it exist and then we're going to do a branch check to see if it exists because if it doesn't exist we can't load from it if it does then we want to load game from slot and the slot is my slot name. And from there, we can go ahead and cast to our save game. And from here, we can get our health. And we can also get our mana values. So now that we have those, we can then go ahead and set those for our character. So we can set the health. And we can set the mana. Now, at this point, the loading will work just fine, but we are actually not yet saving the health and mana because over here, well, we saved something, but actually we saved nothing at the same time because we actually do need to set those values inside of our save game. So for that, whenever we create the save game object, from here, it's the reference from our save game so we can access all the values inside of here. So we want to drag from that and we want to set the health like so. And also we want to set our mana. There we go. So we have those two over here. Now the next thing would be to, let me reroute this real quick. The next thing would be to actually, actually provide these values. So we have our health value from our character and we have the mana value from our character. So let's just plug those in like so. There we go. So now this is ready to go so let's go ahead let's hit one and then let's hit two to load it up so if we press play we can hit one that saved it and if we hit two it loaded it so we don't really see this so now that we have saved this we still have it in the memory oh i forgot to connect this one so it probably did not save that so let's hit one and two there we go so we actually need to hit one so that just so just so that we would save it and now let's change these values so that we can see the difference. So let's bring our mana and health to zero. And now if we hit play, you can see our health is empty. But now if we hit two to load, there we go. Our health and mana just got loaded in from the save game. So this is how you can load basic variables from, from the save game. So it will work for all the variables that you might have to load. But like I said previously, if you have like equipment or spawned actors in the world, then you can't really load them back in directly. You need to respawn them in their locations. So essentially you need to run the same event that you ran during the gameplay. So this one right here, for example. So let's go ahead and let's set that up. So now we are saving the locations and the classes for that. So I'm just going to duplicate the entire thing to over here to another save slot. And if we want to use like the, like I said, two slots, like in this situation, we need to basically give the bottom one a different slot name. So let's call this, uh, my name is my name, Jeff, my name, Jeff, let's copy this. And let's paste it into these slot names right here. So now we have two different slot names. So for example, if now we would set this to be like, let's say 40, 
and the mana 240 we compile and save that we hit play now let's hit keyboard key 3 which will save it to the second slot and let's bring these values back to zero so that we can see again how it loads up compile and save press play if we hit 4 we have that value if we hit 2 it loads the other slot so we can go between these by spamming these keys at this point so that's how you create multiple slots within the same save game. So you don't need to create multiple save games. Just simply change the slot names and they're going to work just fine. So now let's work with this one. So we want to save that one as well in the memory. So let's go ahead. Let's get that value. Let's set it from our save game. So we need to set actor locations array. We set that. We connect that in. And we do exactly the same thing down below as well. Save that in this guy. Connect the target. There we go. So now this is going to store those uh, values that we will have in this variable. But now we need to load those. And the loading part is a little bit different. So again, we want to get, that, get it from our save. So we want to get the actor locations. But instead of just simply... Uh, setting it like we would with our health and mana we want to do something that will actually spawn these objects so let's go ahead let's loop through all of them so that we would get all of them and let's split this to get the class and the transform and now let's run the same function that we ran during the gameplay so our spawn actor function so i'm going to do that i'm going to spawn actor and i'm going to connect the class and the transform and let's just simply copy and paste this to the bottom slot as well. There we go. We have that. And we are good to go. It's going to work just fine. So now let's hit play. Let's load up one of our slots. Let's say this one. Let's spawn a bunch of objects over here. Let's make like a circle. Now let's spawn some more cubes. Uh, let's make it like this so that it's a little bit unique. There we go. So we have a bunch of objects over here. So now I'm going to hit keyboard key one to save that. I'm going to close this off, hit play. And there we go. We are over here. And now if we hit two, all the objects got loaded back in. Our health got loaded in as well. Now, one issue with this is that like we have the keyboard key four. Uh, if we spam this a lot, we can't really see it, but there should be multiple instances of those same objects. So, for instance, if we now spawn some more objects, like these ones right here, and we save those in the second slot. So, let me load it so the health stays. And now if we save it, now if we say load the other slot, it's going to bring those back and we're going to have these as well. So that's kind of an issue. We want to restart our level and then load the one of these two. So we don't want to be able to load both of these. So like over here, like these key events are not good enough. So basically what you will want to do is then reopen your map and you can reopen your map by using just the open level node, provide the level name and it's going to open the level for you. And then you can run the loading and saving whenever you feel like doing so. So yeah, uh, that's the most basic way how to set up a basic save and load system. Uh, pretty simple. All we got to do is create an object, save that information inside of that save game object in these variables, save it to slot, and then we just load from that slot and set those back for our character and spawn the objects that were in the world so that's going to be it for today's video if you found this useful make sure to subscribe leave a like comment join my join my discord and uh, see you in the next one